Hi, uh, welcome to another Terranscapes video. Uh, in this video, I want to revisit this mountain piece, which is the piece that I uh, showcased a um, little bit earlier as a work in progress, as well as mentioned it in the Styroplast review. Uh, so this will be a dual purpose uh, video, both to discuss the development of this piece and also to discuss the effect of the Styroplast on it. Um, the piece, just to give you the background, is um, designed to uh, house the uh, Forge World uh, ruins of Amunsul, Amunsul, however it's pronounced, um, which is a, a large, large ruins featured in the uh, Weathertop Battle of Lord of the Rings. Uh, the piece itself measures, according to the website, um, about 16 inches across. So this hill has been made um, just slightly larger than that to allow the piece to sit on top and has a uh, walkway that comes up and has been sculpted on the side to feature a sort of slate slash granite type weathering. The um, customer uh, recently contacted me after reviewing the first video and um, has uh, requested that the piece be modified to uh, more accurately fit the scenario as described in um, the rules for the Weathertop battle. The Weathertop uh, scenario outlines there um, feature a diagram which I'll insert here. And um, two important notes about that uh, are that the um, ring wraiths have to appear up to 18 inches away from the uh, circle, the inner circle, which is supposed to be about 12 inches in diameter. Now, I haven't seen the Forge World piece. Um, at, at this point, the plan is to send me the Forge World piece so that I can finish it to match this, and um, that will give me a chance to see the interior of it. But it's a 12-inch circle in the interior, so we need 18 inches away from that, plus a 6-inch distance away from the uh, circle for Aragorn to start, assuming that you're playing the scenario rules with all the primary characters that were in that actual battle. So, we're going to take a closer look at this piece and discuss a little bit about some of the modifications that can be made to this existing piece so that it can fit the scenario a little bit better, as well as discuss the effects of the styroplast on the side and some of the weathering that was done to create this effect. So before we discuss uh, the modifications, uh, just a brief recap of the work that's been done. So previously I had shown you, an, especially in a test piece, uh, this type of carving where there's a lot of uh, striations scored into the foam with deep crevasses cut into it vertically. This is based off of um, Herstart's uh, tutorial. If you haven't seen the Herstart's tutorial, you can view my old video which has a link to that uh, tutorial. and. Um, Basically then, after all of this has been carved, then I applied the styroplast to this and uh, feathered it just along the edge here and really tried to dry brush it in very aggressively. Um, I tried to uh, wipe it out and uh, remove as much as possible and then went back in and then uh, after it had cured, painted it and then added, you know, um, foam coat on the top and all the exposed surfaces, um, and then um, also added in talus around the edges. One of the things that was interesting about this talus is that I wanted flat pieces to reflect some of the, you know, the, the, the horizontal slots that are coming out of this. So what I did is I took slate, uh, broke that up into small chunks, and then they still didn't quite look right because they were just a little bit too sharp for the scale. This is something I hadn't really noticed before and makes me think about reworking my stone circle. Anyway, um, so what I did is I took all those slate pieces and I put them in a rock tumbler and I tumbled them for a couple hours just to smooth them out just a little bit and that was just enough to really give a very nice effect that looks very plausible for this uh, outcropping to have shed these stones um, and, uh, and, you know, uh, it sort of uh, made the right kind of talus to match the slope. Um, then I flocked it. You can see flock is, you know, collected in some of the nooks and crannies and added a little bit around. I'll give you a little, let's give you a little pan of at least another side of this so you can see a little bit more of that work. Uh, this is the first time I've carved anything with this kind of a style before and uh, it's definitely something that's going to be revisited in the future as I really like the way it's come out. It looks very natural but also very distinctive and different from any of the other rock cliffs that I've done uh, to date. All right. So now let's talk about modifications for um, to fit it more accurately to the scenario. Uh, the customer suggested making a, a, a larger hill, you know, that was say 40 inches in diameter, which is considerably larger than most hills. Um, his table can accommodate it, but um, 
rather than go for the full 40, I think modification of this piece, not only, you know, and I should say, this, this problem with modifying this, this is my fault. I got a little excited about the new rock face and I really wanted to finish it up. And I should have waited a little bit longer to consult with the uh, customer. So, you know, the onus is on me to get this right. And uh, I think I can modify this to fit both of our, our desires, me to preserve this work and, uh, and for the customer to fit it to the scenario very well. So, looking at this, um, looking at the original scenario description, uh, the inside, inside ring is approximately 12 inches across. By, uh, whoops, excuse me. By capitalizing on that, if we turn it this way, 12 inches to the center, this is the center point here, Aragorn needs to start six inches from this point, six inches from the edge of the circle. And that will still accommodate this path coming up the side here. Now, one of the rules stipulates that the ring rates enter from the opposite side of the board and that they have to be 18 inches from the edge of the circle. So 18 inches is going to carry us, uh, let's see here, this is the, uh, say, the edge of the inner circle. 18 inches is going to carry us off the edge of the board on this side. What my plan is at this point is to modify the hill by shaving down edges where I can, making this a second upper plateau integrating some additional rock facing just off the screen here along the bottom where there's less room to shave and adding extra area to the outside corners. Let me see if I can pan this down a little bit here so you can see where I'm pointing. And for instance, here the ring race are going to be entering ballpark just off screen right here. I can pin sections to match this corner, flock it to cover the seam, and then have the slope come down off the side here. By building a slightly raised secondary tier, I can join to this edge, only covering a small amount of work, and give the appearance of a slope coming up to this that would be moderately or reasonably believable for figures to cross with a bit of talus piled against some edges and some gently sloping areas coming up that will support 28 millimeter models without tipping over. Same will be, have to be done on the other side here where this will be shaved down at the top. Whoops, I'm off screen again. This is tough as I'm uh, facing away from the camera right now. I'll shave down this area around here to make this into a second slope and extend some of these areas with pinned pieces so that the hill will have an irregular base that will be slightly oblong uh, but mostly, mostly circular. I'd say more mm, broad oval so it probably won't be uniform circular and might have a couple lobes coming off of it and then this upper area here will represent a second tier with some areas built up to bring up the slope to give the appearance that more areas are traversable but still preserving the key play areas which is entrance by the individual Aragorn here and then having the ring race being able to access it from this side here. It's going to be a little bit of a trick but not completely unworkable uh, or out of the things that I've done in the past as the entire 24 inch board here if you haven't seen the work in progress this entire 24 inch board is already pinned together as I can't cut a, a true 24 inch board from the foam that I use so pinning them is as a technique that I've done quite a bit in the past and it's a very solid seam and then by adding a little bit of foam coat and some um, flock the seams will be completely um, um, uh, unobservable to the eye and uh, and I'll still be able to preserve a considerable amount of the rock face around say 70 percent of the sides uh, where some of the bottom will be covered up I'll have to add some additional talus around some of the uh, uh, raised up areas and then um, some of the areas will be joined actually coming up almost to the very very top so it'll have, a, I think, actually a more interesting appearance as it can look a little artificial to have a sort of circular rock platform lifted up. Although there are some natural landforms that do that, um, it certainly is a little bit more uh, usual to see an uneven topography where some areas have weathered more excessively than others, creating different kinds of access points to the slope. Uh, so probably in my best estimate, total diameter of this piece will finish out at about 36 inches across. Um, and it will vary somewhere, you know, plus or minus uh, three or four inches on that mark. And that should, again, provide enough and uh, provide enough space for the, you know, models to enter within the 12-inch circle in the interior and still preserve the top piece 
at its 17 inch diameter across so that it can fit the Forge World weather top piece on top. So, um, this gives you an idea of the scope of the project and some of the changes that will be made. Um, again, it's a nice, way to, a nice chance to check in again on the Styroplast and how it accepted the paint very, very well. Um, this was primed with automotive primer as a base and then um, using latex paints over the top of it. Accepted that paint very well. It seems to be a very durable finish. And uh, of course, it's a lesson in uh, sort of um, curbing your enthusiasm as I was so excited with the way it was coming out, I really wanted to push it ahead and get it finished and see it in its final state and really needed to double check on uh, what kinds of uh, uses it was going to receive. One of the nice things though is that it gives me a chance to really refine this piece and I think in the end it's going to look significantly better than the original vision I had for it and that's always the best goal is to bring a piece to its you know, highest fruition, if you will. So I'm looking forward to actually the reworking of this and adding a little bit more depth and a little bit more life to it. So keep an eye on the channel. Of course, when I do that revision, there'll be another video that'll show it as its final uh, final stage uh, with shrubs and, and bushes, maybe even a few trees. The scenario showed a couple trees in the layout, and even though they don't play a role in the rules per se, uh, they're going to add a lot of life to it. So I might take a look at that. And um, and if you have any questions, of course, you can always put comments uh, in the section down below and uh, visit terrencecapes.com for contact information and photos and uh, whatnot. You know the end of these videos almost probably better than I do now. So uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.